there's something about a snake that, that hooks people automatically. Either they're terrified of them or they're intrigued by this animal that has no legs and feet. They don't know very much about them. I'm Katie Colbert. I'm one of the naturalists here at Sonol Ohlone Regional Wilderness. We have all different kinds of insects and mammals and birds. And we also have the Northern Pacific rattlesnake, which is the only rattlesnake in Northern California. It's a fascinating animal. It's an important predator. And they are prey for animals as diverse as predatory birds, king snakes, and bobcats. They are ambush hunters. They don't chase down their prey. They kind of wait for it to come to them. A rattlesnake might be hunting and come across the trail of a meadow mouse and wait for the mouse to come hopping by. So in this project, my main goal was to try to start to see a landscape through the eyes of a rattlesnake. I tracked about a dozen northern Pacific rattlesnakes to gather information about when they go into hibernation, when they come out of it, whether or not they spend them in dens with more than one individual, and to get some idea of what the size of the turf is over which they range. Once I've found a snake and I've determined that it is large enough, then I've taken it to a vet who surgically implants the transmitter through a, a tiny little opening he makes in the back third of the snake's body. We put the snake in a warm, quiet place until it recovers from the anesthetic, and then I release it back where I found it and continue tracking it from then on. This is an example of the radio transmitter that is implanted in one of my snakes. And it sends a signal that is audible to the receiver that I'm carrying. Each transmitter is tuned to a different frequency, so the receiver can dial up a snake. So as I rotate the antenna around my head, I'm listening for a variation in how loud the beep is. So it's loudest over here, which could mean the snake is that way or that way. There have been times when I knew a snake was right in front of me somewhere. When you get close to the snake and the radio, it's a little harder to read the signal. I've almost kneeled on top of a snake. I learned that here at Sonol, the rattlesnakes that return to the same hibernaculum year after year after year. And to me, that's just, it's quite remarkable. I thought of these animals as having pretty random behavior, but in fact, it's not random at all. They get to know their home. And I think that's significant since we need to remove them from places where they're likely to have an unpleasant encounter with people. And if we know that they become familiar with their landscape, then we also have an obligation, I think, to make sure that we don't take them too far out of that. One of the unusual characteristics of my research is that I'm integrating it with the work I do with kids on a daily basis. First, David, and then we can trade. Okay, we're ready for you. I have taken children out to track rattlesnakes in the park, captured rattlesnakes and relocated them. I have been able to learn to work with individual snakes so that I can put them in a tube and give people an, a really up close look at a rattlesnake. People are scared of rattlesnakes and sometimes they will just kill them, even in the parks. We don't want that to happen. Just because they are dangerous to people doesn't make them 
any less of an important strand in the web of life in this landscape.